Hey everyone, uh, I'm back after my uh, trip to Cuba with my family over the past week. I was gone from the 26th to the 2nd of January. Uh, I just got back uh, as of three hours ago from Cuba. A uh, very, very long trip coming back. Um, Hokine Airport, the flights got all messed up, the computers were shut down, so we're waiting three hours in lines. Um, didn't, the plane was meant to leave at 11, didn't leave until 12.30, but it doesn't matter. I'm back home safe. I got mad. I have a flight attendant. Probably wasn't the smartest thing, but, you know, whatever. Um, however, I'm here today, though, to review a particular book. Um, so going to Cuba, uh, if you know anything about Cuba, Cuba is a communist country, and um, you probably are well aware of who Fidel Castro is, and what he was like as a person, and what he was like as a personality. Like, all the stuff that he did. Um... However, I read a book about his second-in-command. His name was uh, Che Guevara. Um, che Guevara is a very interesting man. Um, I don't agree with any of his politics or what he did. He did some very terrible things, um, like firing squads. and He killed a lot of people, but um, he's a very interesting man nonetheless. Um, I'm not here today to talk about I don't support Che Guevara or his views, but I'm just here today to talk about and critique this book about him and uh, sort of just like study it. I'm not supporting his views in any way. I do not endorse them, just to get that off the bat. Um, so Che Guevara was an Argentinian. Um, he was born in 1928 in Argentina. His full name is Ernesto Guevara. I don't know his full name in Spanish, but his real name is actually Ernesto, and Che was the name that was given to him by... Uh, communist revolutionaries when he was in the Congo, sort of because he was a foreigner. I don't really know the full story behind it. I can't quite remember. It's in the book because the book is very, very complicated. That's one thing I'll get to about the book. Um, so I'll read the back of the book. So, um, so the book is called uh, Che Guevara: A Revolutionary Life by John Lee Anderson. This is the revised edition. So this one came about ten years ago. It's a little outdated now because Fidel passed away in 2016. Fidel Castro, if you don't know who that is, was the former. Uh, president of Cuba. He ruled from like 1959 all the way to 2011 uh, when he stepped down and his brother took over. Uh, his brother recently resigned as of 2018. There's a new guy. I can't remember his name, but his last name is, I think his name is Jose Miguel Canal. I'm probably getting his name wrong, but there's a new guy in power. Um, but uh, Raul's still in there. He's still the general secretary of the Communist Party in Cuba. Uh, so uh, so what the book is about, so I'll just read the back. So John Lee Anderson's definitive and acclaimed biography of Che Guevara manages to transcend the myth of Che and portray it in unrivaled detail of a complicated human being. In his quest to discover who the real Che was, Anderson moved to Havana and gained unprecedented access to the personal archives maintained by Che's widow, who is Alida March. I believe I'm saying her name right. He got married twice, so I'll get to that later. Um, he spent months with Che's old friends in Argentina, where Che was born to an aristocratic family and went to medical school. He interviewed Che's comrades from the battles fought in Cuba, the Congo, and Bolivia, and he talked to figures on both sides of the Cold War, in Moscow, and in the CIA. Uh, the book completes the epic saga of an extraordinary life. In 1995, Anderson broke the story about Che's body had been secretly hidden after his assassination in Bolivia in 1967. He recounts how the body was recovered 30 years after the murder, brought back to Cuba, and turned into place Che had won his most famous battle in the Cuban Revolution, which is Santa Clara, Cuba. I did not go there. I was in Joaquin. And I did get to go to Santiago de Cuba, but um, I did not go to Santa Clara or Havana. I would have really liked to see Havana, though. Um, meticulously researched, Anderson's book reveals many details of Che's life that were long cloaked in secrecy and intrigue. This edition, which has been carefully revised and updated, has a new introduction, epilogue, new maps, and new chron chronology of Che's life. Um, so I won't really get into who Che was because that would be too long, make this video too long. I sort of give you a brief overview. He was sort of Fidel Castro's second command during the Cuban Revolution, Argentinian born. He really got radicalized um, when he traveled all across South America. He, you probably have heard of the book Motorcycle Diaries. He went with his friend Alberto Grando. He uh, it was in 1952, I believe. He basically left Argentina. He traveled up like the west coast of South America. Went to like Bolivia, uh, Peru, went to Colombia, uh, Venezuela, he went to Miami. Um, but basically, sort of, he saw peasants and how they were being treated and how people were being treated in these countries, and he sort of really realized how the US was controlling these countries. I mean, I don't support communism, 
but what the U.S. was doing in these countries was it wasn't good. Um, both sides of the Cold War were not perfect. It was a really bad situation. Just politics are a really crappy thing, and both sides have blood on their hands. It's the Cold War wasn't as black as white as people think. It wasn't just democracy versus communism. It was much more complicated than that and affected a lot more people in a lot of different ways beyond what people usually think. Because you had all these really terrible, oppressive, like military dictatorships and governments within South America that were just absolutely horrible. They killed thousands and thousands of people. It was just absolutely terrible. Oh, crap, someone just messaged me on Facebook and me mad. Um, yeah, it was just absolutely terrible. I just, I, I don't support those views in any way. So basically, I went on this trip with his friend. He sort of became radicalized, and uh, there was a revolution in Guatemala, one of which is now. It was like a left-wing revolution, but the U.S., of course, overthrew the government. Uh, so he basically traveled on to Mexico, and that's where he met Fidel Castro. And that's where they started to plan the whole Cuban Revolution, traveled to Cuba. They started a guerrilla, uh, guerrilla warfare movement, forgive my terrible Spanish pronunciation. And it's just, it basically uh, chronicles his life from early childhood, motorcycle diaries. He goes on a second trip through Latin America, that's the one where he goes to Guatemala. And then it chronicles when he meets Fidel Castro from Mexico, Cuban Revolution, uh, the aftermath of the Cuban Revolution. Uh, che also attempted to do revolu revolutionary movement in what is now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He did it in the eastern part of the country, near you know, Rwanda and uh, Burundi and Tanzania is. Um, so he did that, and then he decided to do one in Bolivia, and that's unfortunately where he had his life taken. He was executed after he was caught by the Bolivian army that was assisted by a CIA agent. Um, so that's more or less his life in a sense. So what I really liked about this book is that it really helped capture the essence of the man because the man only lived 39 years, but he had such a complex and long life. It's like, it's just incredibly hard to believe. Uh, just let me get some notes up really quickly. Um, I just have some more thoughts. Like, I really appreciate how the book did that. That's what I really liked about the book. Um, uh, it's very long. I really appreciate the effort and the... I really appreciate the effort, the research, the tears and sweat put into the thing. I appreciate the amount of painstaking detail put into this book, and it's very, very well researched. Like, a book is 730 pages long. It is not an easy read. You need a lot of patience to read about it. You need a lot of patience. I read this over a week, but I was reading like 100 pages of it a day. And it is, it's quite the trick. It's literally, you feel like you're going, <laughs> you feel like you're doing guerrilla warfare of Che. Like, the book is that long. It does, like, you need a bit of endurance to get through it, but it's a really good book. It's really well written. I really appreciate the effort put into it, but the one thing I'd say about the book is that it's a little too long. That's one thing I didn't like about the book, but the book flows very well, and uh, it's just so complicated, and sometimes it's a little hard to keep track of all the names of people because Che was involved in so many different things, like Cuba, Guatemala, Mexico, uh, Bolivia, Congo. He traveled all across the world. Um, he did his famous speech in New York City in 1964 at the UN, so that was really complicated. So he, he meets all these different dignitaries, he meets like the Prime Minister of India, the Khrushchev, um, he doesn't meet Kennedy, he meets Joseph McCarthy at some point in the book. He meets basically like all the big leaders of the third world countries, and he meets, he basically meets all the world leaders, more or less. So it really shows that, it shows how he sort of went abroad to represent Cuba as revolutionary, uh, Fever. That was one thing that they did. Um, so that's one thing. The book, the book is very complicated. Um, but yeah, but it makes sense to put all these names down because you want to help, like, fully grasp, like, the scale. And it was, it's sort of like on an epic scale. You want to grasp and like bring his life down to a simpler way. Like this book is seven hundred pages. That is a huge book. The pages are huge. It's just, but the amount of research put into this. So you really have to try and capture the scale and show people how big his life was. And how important man he was in world history. Um, it's, yeah, I very remember it's not an easy read. Uh, I really appreciate the sequence of events in Che's life was presented beginning and end, and how it literally felt one of his giant motorcycle trips uh, as he was traveling to all the places he went to. So it literally, like, I really say the book starts to pick up when he goes to the motorcycle diaries, like that part of his life, the trip he took in 1952 with his friend Alberto. Travels all across South America, and I think it's sort of when he's in. He talks to this one couple who were persecuted because they're communist, and he sees all how peasants are being treated, and this sort of really radicalizes him. This really changes him. So you really do see that, and you go through everything that he did. Uh, this author interviewed his former wife. I don't think he interviewed Fidel 
or um, Raul, but he interviewed a lot of his former comrades, like a lot of people in the CIA, the KGB, former KGB, Russia, like anyone who was involved in the Communist Party, um, more or less in Cuba. But I don't think he interviewed Fidel. I don't think, yeah, he didn't interview Fidel or Raul. I don't think, he was an American, so yeah, it's a little awkward. But he did manage to interview Chase's former wife, which was quite a big thing, his widow. Um, so that's something I really enjoyed in the book. Covers how his motorcycle trip was like the start of his life to his death in Bolivia, and really just feels like everything he did was one giant big adventure instead of one singular event. Because how most people's lives are chrono chronalized, I'd say, or like it's sort of like they have one really big event that defines them, but Che had like multiple big events that defined his life, like motorcycle diaries, Guatemala, uh, Cuban Revolution, and all those adventures abroad. Like we all know about that. So I really say it really, really captured the scale and epicness of his life. I'm not calling his life epic, but yep, it's like on an epic scale. Um, the thing I would have liked to see more about the book was more about the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Bay Pigs, because uh, I am really interested in those two things. Those are two parts of history that I really like to study, and just having recently been in Cuba. Uh, it was just the 60th anniversary yesterday as we're recording this. I'm recording this on January 2nd, 2019. That was the 60 year anniversary yesterday of when uh, Fidel Castro came to power in Cuba and the end of the Cuban Revolution, and the former dictator of Cuba, I can't say his name, his last name is Bautista, he fled Cuba to Spain, um, so it was the 60th anniversary, so I didn't really see anything, because I was at a resort most of the time, but I did go to Santiago, and I did see a lot of, um, like, signs up for it, and the one thing that really, that's a whole other thing, I'll probably do a blog post with my thoughts on Cuba, I'm just reading the books here. Um... He did. He was involved in the Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Missile Crisis, particularly the Cuban Missile Crisis, because he really helped shape Cuba's foreign policy and how they were represented abroad. Like, a lot of people just focus on Fidel and what he did, but Che was sort of really the true mastermind and revolutionary behind the Cuban Revolution. Like, he convinced Fidel to become communist to align with Moscow. I mean, he himself was very pro-China. Um, historical context, so you had, you, you had People's Republic of China, which is mainland China, and then he had the USSR, which is now uh, Russia and all the former Soviet republics. Uh, so in 1961, there was a split between the two over different views on Marxism and communism. So basically, it also really shows the book how the Cold War itself, like in the communists, there was this split, and it showed that the Cold War actually had three sides, because you have the Chinese, the Russians, and the Americans. They were the three big powers still, and they had Britain and France in there, but they, they still have power, but not as much. But it was really these three countries, so... Because within a lot of communist parties in the West and in the East, you had a schism occur between them. Either you're either pro China or pro Moscow. So those were the things. So the book really captured that well. It really shows the divide it was much deeper in the communist side and the Cold War than you think. And Che wanted to sort of bring the two groups back together. Um, yeah, the only criticism I have of the book it's a tad too long, not an easy read for the average reader. But those who really want to learn about Che, this is the book for you. Uh, I would have also liked to hear more about the author's research period and what he did during that time, because that'd be really interesting itself in a book. I might actually try it. <laughs> I doubt I can actually get an interview with the author, but I'd absolutely love to hear more about his research time. Like, he he only really comes in himself at the very end of the book. Like, he says, after Che dies, he went, he moved to Havana in the 1990s to interview Alita, his former wife. Uh, so he basically had access to all of Che's personal archives, his former books and stuff. He spent a lot of time with Alberto Grondo, who passed away in 2013, I believe. So he, he still lived for a pretty long time. Um, another biography I wanted to sort of compare to, but completely different people, uh, was the Steve Jobs biography. And the one thing that I really liked about that was that the author would sort of pepper in like the research that he did. Like he sort of put himself into the book, but not to the point where it got distracting or it didn't take away from the main subject, which was Steve Jobs. I would have really liked to see that more in this, because it was just sort of all about Che. He didn't really hear about what was going on in the present day when he was researching it. So that was something I really liked with the Steve Jobs biography, but that's just one biography, because I don't usually read biographies. I'll try and read one once a year. That's sort of the goal I have, to read one really good biography a year, and this was sort of the one that I did. Well, I read several. I read Black Klansman, Into the Wild, so I've, I've read several. Um, so yeah. Uh, and yes, as I said, Che was a very polarizing figure, and I don't agree with his political views or how he killed so many people in firing squads and treated his own men, but I do find him really interesting, and I can understand the loyalty of the legend a lot. If you go to Cuba, you'll see a lot of um, sort of uh, propaganda and like memorials dedicated to him. Uh, I didn't see the big one in Santa Clara again. I did not get a chance to go to Santa Clara. 
Um, so the book was well written. I really enjoyed that. Really long, but it's really enjoyable. You really do gain a sense of the scope and epicness, epicness of his life through this, so I really appreciate that. Um, so just a few thoughts on who Che was. I just feel like I should put this into the video, even though I already have stated. Uh, I can understand and relate to the idea Che had to fight back against U.S. imperialism and stalling regimes just as terrible and oppressive as Cuba's regime in Central and South America, where they had no business doing so, the United States themselves. Uh, it just made things really bad, and it, sh it showed, again, how the Cold War wasn't so black and white, but Che himself had no business going down to these countries and starting violent communist insurgent, uh, insurrections, guerrilla warfare revolutions. Like, he had no business doing that. Um, a lot of the communist parties in South America wanted to do peacefully through elections. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm supporting them in doing this, but they want to go about it in a much more reasonable way. I'd say I am absolutely against using violence against the state. Personally, I'm, I'm a pacifist. Um, I'd say the book also did a really good job of showing both the downsides of democracy, capitalism, and communism, and the socialist economic system itself. So I really appreciate that. I focused on the bigger picture part, because Che was such a big part of spreading communism to the world. He just did it in Cuba because he failed in both Congo and Bolivia, where he unfortunately was executed. Um, and it shows how the U.S. itself was an innocent, taking away people's uh, lives and supporting oppressive regimes, just like the Soviets did. Um, it just shows how shitty politics can be and how it can affect so many people's lives, and you really gain a sense of the mind state of... Uh, one of the 20th century's most polarizing revolutionary figures, which I, which was something I really appreciate about the book. Um, I just really wished that America could have done back in the 20th century that they could have found a way to be more democratic, like support more uh, democracies, and if they were really oppressive dictatorships, they should have gone in, but that could have caused more instability. So it was a really shitty situation. Um, things have improved in South America a lot, like Argentina, Chile, uh, Panama, Costa Rica, they have really, really stable democracies. There is a lot of corruption, but they do have lots of freedom of the press, freedom of speech. Uh, Brazil right now is a very interesting case with Jair Bolsonaro, the newly elected president, the far-right guy. That's very interesting. He's sort of a big threat to uh, Brazil's public institutions, I'd say. But that's a whole another thing for another day. Um, if you guys want to have me discuss that, I can totally do a follow-up video for that. I'm always looking for new ideas. Um, but yeah, the book the book was a really good biography. I I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I don't really know what else I can say about it because I don't want to give away too much about Chase Live. Uh, I want people to sort of go in not knowing much. But you probably have seen the iconic photo of him. It's um, I don't know who took the photo, but it's the really iconic photo. Let me see if I can get it up on my phone just to sort of show it to people that might recognize it. Um, Um, so this is what the photo looked like. It's a really, it's one of the most iconic photos of the 20th century. So I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Yeah, so it's one of the most iconic photos of the 20th century, and you'll see it all around. And, um, like every college student, at some point in their life will have a Che Guevara poster, or a Che Guevara hat, or a Che Guevara t-shirt in their college dorm. That is an absolute guarantee. I have a Che Guevara flag, actually, in my college. I used to bring it up to camp. That's just quite a funny thing. I just like to hang it up. I thought it was cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but again, yeah, my thoughts about the book, I don't really have anything else to say. I, I've said all my points. I would rate the book uh, 9 out of 10. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Very well written. Uh, shows the scale and epicness of his life. Shows how the Cold War wasn't just as black as white as people thought it was. It was much more complicated. And both sides were guilty and bloodshed. And it just shows that the world just isn't black and white overall, and it captures the scale and epicness of uh, just one man who lived a very short time, but he had a very huge impact upon the world, and his name was Ernesto Che Guevara. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my book review, and I shall see you guys very soon.